Nowadays, it seems like everywhere you turn, there's a new 16 inch drawing display. And, and if you're new to this stuff, it could be a little complicated. Like a lot of people have heard of Wacom. They have a new Cintiq Pro 16, which came out earlier this year. There's the Huion Canvas Pro 16 4K and the XP Pen Artist 16 Pro TP. Those three tablets alone make up that high end, that pro level of these 16 inch tablets out there. But each of these companies also makes a cheaper version of their 16 inch displays with stripped down specs at a lower cost. And of course, there are other manufacturers out there too, like Gaomon and Artisil and a bunch of others. Every so often I'll cover one of those. I don't cover them quite as closely because I found the quality not to be quite as good overall. And so every so often I make a video like this to make it a little bit easier. I also rank these things on my website. So if you want to see my favorites and orders with links to the reviews, those are all up there as well. So I can just start by looking at those pro level displays that I mentioned just a minute ago. I also want to touch on what features you might be missing if you decide to go with something a little less expensive. So what makes these pro displays pros? Well, there are a handful of features that drive up the price. The first is that all of these are 4K or higher resolution screens. Now on a 16 inch tablet, that's really nice. You don't really need a screen that's that high resolution, but think about how you use a drawing tablet. A normal monitor is sitting several feet in front of you, whereas a drawing tablet, you're hovering right above it. You're looking right down at it. So those HD displays that are a little bit cheaper, you're gonna see every pixel. With a 4K display, it looks so much crisper and so much nicer. The other premium feature, at least on two of these, is multi-touch. That lets you pinch and zoom in on your artwork or tap to undo or use other hand gestures. The XP Pen and the Wacom both come with these touchscreen displays. In the past, this has been a little bit of a mixed bag because of palm rejection or the lack thereof. I mean, palm rejection was there, but what you'd find a lot were many, many false positives. So it'd leave marks on your page or you'd accidentally toggle to the wrong layer. And that only has to happen once or twice in a drawing session to make it really frustrating. The good news here, with both of these products is I feel like the touch gestures have gotten way better in this generation. The other thing is both of these have little hardware toggles. So right there on the tablet, you can actually turn touch on or off. That's nice because it saves you the time of having to dig through the settings to find that sort of thing. Right now, the highest end Huion does not have touch, but I wouldn't be surprised if they release something sometime in the next year that does. Now Wacom has gone back to including express keys on their tablets. Those are those little shortcut keys that you can see on a lot of tablets that you can map to whatever you want. You could map them to undo, you can change your brush size with them, zoom in or out. I love shortcut keys, but it seems like lately, at least on the high-end tablets, and I'm not sure why, we've seen a lot of manufacturers do away with them. Both the XP Pen and the Huion have gotten rid of those shortcut keys this time around. However, you are going to find them on the lower-end versions we're going to talk about in a few minutes. Both Wacom and Huion sell their own little remotes extra, so if you wanted to have that shortcut remote available to you, you know, that is more handy, but it is an additional price as well. Something else worth mentioning here is that these are all laminated displays. I don't talk about that quite as much anymore, but what lamination does is it reduces the amount of space between the screen and the glass above it. And when you're drawing, that makes a huge difference because there's just less displacement between your pen tip and where the cursor appears on the screen below it. Another thing you find on these higher end displays is a pretty good color gambit. These all are pretty solid. So as we look at these, they are obviously very similar across the board, but what about drawing? If I was gonna rank these, I would probably put Wacom number one, Huion number two, and XP pen number three for me. The Waka Pen is phenomenal. I love the way the pressure sensitivity works. I love the settings that allow you to change it around. I, I just think it's a very comfortable pen to use. And I feel that way about Huion and XP Pen as well. The reason I put Wacom higher is because I find that when I'm looking for a little bit of pen wobble, especially when I'm drawing like slow angled lines, when I'm using the Huion, I can see that a little bit there. On the XP Pen, it's a little bit more pronounced. In fact, when I'm using an XP Pen tablet, I do have to toggle on pen smoothing in the uh, drawing application I'm using in order to completely knock that out. Because sometimes I will see it when I'm creating a stroke or trying to get that really smooth line, you'll see like that little wobble to it. That's something you just don't find in Wacom and that's why I put it at the top of my list. But overall, I think all three of these pens are pretty darn good. So which of these three are the best overall? I think for me, it goes to the Cintiq Pro. No surprise there. But if you chose to save a few hundred dollars on one of the other ones, you're getting 95% of the way there. So for a lot of folks, I'm not sure it's worth the few hundred dollars more to get like 
5% better performance. If you're one of those people who is going to notice some of those things like that tiny bit of pen wobble and that is going to absolutely drive you nuts, then yeah, Wacom in the pro category probably is the best way to go. All right, so on the lower end, we have some good options too. The Wacom Cintiq 16, it sounds like the other one we just talked about, but there's no pro in the name. There's the Huion Canvas 16 2021 version, which is the latest version, at least as of the recording of this video, and the XP Pen Artist 16 second gen. The good news here is all of these have the same exact pens that you're going to find on the higher end versions we were just talking about. So the number one thing that you need your drawing tablet to do well, which is draw, these do it really well well and do it just as well as their more expensive counterparts. So what exactly are you missing if you step down to one of these lower end models? On all of them, you're gonna have a lower resolution screen. All of these are full HD, that means 1080p. Like I said before, when you're hovering directly above them and drawing, you're gonna notice the pixels. Doesn't take away from your art or mean that you're gonna draw worse or anything like that. But from a quality standpoint, you're going to see it. The color gambits also are a step down. Now, personally, I am not like a hardcore color nerd. So for me to see the difference between these things, I have to kind of see these displays next to each other and go, OK, yeah, I, I can see that there is some difference here. But just looking at it on its own, I don't notice a huge step down. Photographers or people who need super color accuracy probably will. The other thing which you probably already guessed is none of these have touch, so you're not gonna be able to pinch and zoom. You're gonna have to use keyboard shortcuts to move around more than you are on the others. Although on the Huion and the XP Pen, we are seeing the addition of shortcut keys to the face of the device. So you can map some of the functionality you used to get on touch directly to the shortcuts on the tablet. I did mention laminated displays earlier where you can actually see your pen cursor underneath the screen if there's too much space between the screen and the glass above it. XP Pen and Huion look fantastic. There's almost no gap. The Cintiq, on the other hand, feels a whole lot older. And when I look at that 16 inch Cintiq, this is definitely easily the feature I miss the most. Not only does it not look good, but sometimes when you're trying to line up your stroke or get that really nuanced pixel by pixel accuracy, you're gonna miss sometimes because of that. I think both the XP Pen and the Huion are good choices here. I would give the edge to Huion here because I prefer its pen. On the other hand, this is one area where I'd say, hmm, maybe stay away from Wacom. I think if they released a new version with a laminated display sometime in the near future, I would have no problem recommending it, but for now, that that's a killer for me. It makes it a far less fun to draw on. I really like the size of these displays. 16 inches is super comfortable. If you've never used a drawing tablet with a screen before, I think this is the area, this is the size that I would recommend most people jumping in on. Unlike some of the smaller ones like the 12 or 13 inches, it's just a little bit easier, actually a lot easier to use your pen to hit some of those points. Change layers, change the size of your brushes. So those little interface elements in these drawing programs. Big enough where you can see everything, but small enough where you can move it out of the way when you're not using it. So that's what I think. Hopefully this was helpful to you. Let me know down below what you think in the comments. Thank you all for watching, and I'll talk to you in a couple of days. Bye.